Hello everybody, welcome to Smack Talk. I'm Scotty Mack and today we're going to be looking at the Algado Stream Deck XL and using it to grade with DaVinci Resolve and Baselight Editions. After opening the packaging, you'll find the main Stream Deck XL unit along with this nice handy angled mount so you can see the buttons a little bit easier on a desk. If you prefer to lay it flat, the Stream Deck comes with these nice little rubber mounts here so it can lay flat without moving around when you're touching it. And the Stream Deck also comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable, so it's compatible with pretty much all systems. Before we get started on the setup and configuration of the Stream Deck device, I just wanted to go over some of the reasons that I chose this particular unit and why it's been helpful for me as a colorist. Now typically, Twitch streamers and gamers will use this device to map out their favorite shortcuts or functions so they can stay focused on a game and not really need to be looking around. They can just hit these key buttons that they've set and stay focused on the game itself. But this device has proven very handy for colorists and image makers who might be working on a Blackmagic Design micro panel that doesn't have all the key functions that you'd find on a mini or an advanced panel. So you can map out your most important functions to basically make it rival the functionality of that of a mini panel, which is really handy. Now the other advantage is that you can use this with any application, Adobe Premiere, Avid, Baselight. And in this instance, I was using it for Baselight editions with Avid. I needed to learn Baselight in a pretty rapid manner. So it required me trying to map most of the common functions I'll find in Resolve out on the 32 buttons, and then switching it over to the Baselight page and trying to find similar complementary functions so that my muscle memory could hit the same thing and I could just get to grading without really being bogged down by the cumbersome aspect of having to learn all the shortcut keys for Baselight editions, which there are plenty to learn. So the first thing you're going to want to do getting started is go to the Elgato website and go to their download sections where you'll find the Stream Deck XL under the drop down. And in this particular instance, we're doing on OS X, so we're going to choose Mac. And then you click the download button for Mac. After you've downloaded this Stream Deck XL installer, open it up and continue to go through the menus and install it the same way that you would pretty much all softwares out there. Install it onto our system. After you've installed the Stream Deck XL application, it'll open up and bring you to the configuration page where you'll see that you've got this welcome button that lets you modify the title, the URL, access in the background. You can come over here to actually change the icon or create a new icon. Um, in this case, we're just gonna trash this one. And you can see while looking at our actual device, our Stream Deck device, when I click delete, boom, it's gone. So up here, is our actual device itself. If you had multiple Elgato items, you could choose from a list of those. Um, and then default profiles, you have a few that you can work with. Now over here is the setting tool so that we can actually go through and configure. But first, let's look over here at some of the options that we'd have to actually implement and add on. So if you're doing game capture, OBS Studio, Soundboard, Stream Deck, Stream Deck OBS, all these things are options you'll have access to. In my particular instance, I don't really need to see this stuff, so I'm gonna turn the game capture option off, turn off OBS Studio, because I'm not doing streaming. I don't really need to do any soundboard stuff. I definitely wanna have the Stream Deck options. Stream Deck OBS, not so much. System configuration, for sure. I, myself, don't really use the Twitter or YouTube stuff that often and control center this is more base if you actually have another Elgato device so that you could turn down lights with the bridge to actually control the stream room that you're working within so i'm going to turn that one off as well and i'm going to turn off twitch studio so now when i go to done our options here have now been pretty limited down so we could choose the option to change the brightness of our particular device so we can go brighter um, or if you wanted to, you also have the option to go darker. So in this instance here, I kind of like to have a brighter option. Let's drag over our brightness again. In this instance, we don't need to to uh, brighter, so we'll go darker with one. And then one thing too is you can have multiple pages within here that you've mapped profiles to, which is really handy. So we'll start by adding the switch profile button to our first screen. And this profile here is going to kind of act as our OSX. Um, configuration. So in this instance, we would probably want to open up our applications folder and just choose some of our hero applications that we use. So in this instance, Premiere, down on the third, even though we're not really going to be using it, we'll add that on there. Let's add our Disby task. Maybe we want to add that. Let's add DaVinci Resolve because that's going to be one of the main things we're using. So we'll just add our DaVinci Resolve here. 
Um, and you can pretty much add any application you want to this particular screen. Um, one thing, I'm not really a huge fan of the text that comes over top, so I'm just going to delete all this text. But if you did want to actually modify whether you show it or not, or the size of it, you can also check it off here. So in this instance, we'll just click text, not show it, Premiere, not show it, Blackmagic Disk, not show it. Um, and one other thing is if you have some pretty common functions such as going into a folder, you can go open and then you can drag the app or file to, to this root directory and, and then it'll, it'll show in there here. Now you could go through and modify and create a new icon. Um, in this instance, I, I'm not a huge fan of the stock kind of Elgato Stream Deck background, so I usually like to make a black one. Um, library, if you wanted to down here, you have the option to use any of these existing ones that have kind of been created by uh, Stream Deck which are, are pretty common functions that you use, such as Facebook, Twitter, um, folder icons and stuff like that. Or you can click this little tiny um, image thumbnail here and add an image and then load one in from your particular system. We're not going to do that in this case. Um, we're just going to take this black image that's here, text. And we're going to just make this black, save key. We've now got our stream back key. Now what I'm gonna do is I like to have stuff kind of preset on my system um, inside of my iCloud drive folder. Um, and in this case, I've got a little stream deck folder here. It's kind of already got one. So I already have this stream deck key.png, so I don't really need it. But if you wanted to create one like that, you download it off, their, off of their uh, generator key creator website here. Um, so let me just get out of this for the time being go back to our configuration. So as you can see, I don't really like that background. So what I'm gonna do is um, set from file and we're just gonna go back to that iCloud folder and Stream Deck and then choose this black background. And the only reason, I just prefer a black background. I don't really like the way that it's set up like that. And if I were to have this type in here, probably want it to be a bit smaller. In this instance, I'm on uh, OS X, so I prefer to go with the system font, which would be Tahoma. And you could choose whether you want it to be bold, in this case, let's just make it a bit smaller and I prefer it to be a bit centered. So you can see I've already started to set this up. We've got most of our main functions here. Um, and this particular profile would be based for just working with an OS X. And um, you can see if I actually press this next button, nothing's gonna happen because we don't have any additional pages. But if I go into the settings by clicking the settings wheel here and check for updates, thank God we're up to date. Stream Deck XL, let's change this to Smack Deck. And do I want it to sleep? Let's say, yeah, let's get to sleep after 15 minutes. And if you want, you can choose a, a screensaver in here. Um, and again, if you had that Stream Deck folder, you just create like a Stream Deck wallpaper, open it up, and you can generate your own screensaver as well from the Elgato Stream Deck website for the creator. In this instance, I just took an existing logo I had and just kind of spaced it through. Now, accounts, if you had uh, Twitch stream or YouTube, you could, you could connect them here to link in. In this instance, we more so just wanna look at profiles. So right now we are working on our default profile. So let's call this one OS X and say that the only time we want this to come up by default would be while we're in Finder. And we wanted this to be our default profile. So when we're not on something else, it's gonna go back to this. Um, now here's the option that if we wanted to, we could add another profile here. We call this one DaVinci Resolve. And we go to other and choose what application we want to actually run this with. DaVinci Resolve, click DaVinci, open. So anytime that you click um, the DaVinci Resolve button here and open it up, it's gonna change you automatically to this page. And you can see by default, it's brought our page back to having this welcome screen here. I don't really want that. So getting started with this DaVinci Resolve profile, the first thing that we're gonna do is add some hotkeys. because that's the way that we're gonna actually be talking to DaVinci Resolve while the application is active. So go down to hotkey here from your system settings, drag and drop that on. Um, and in this instance, what we wanna do is add a node, which is the shortcut. Option S, okay, by default the title will merit what you put in for the shortcut. So in this instance, we just wanna go plus node or add node. And you can see that I kind of hit a uh, double line there just to illustrate an example. So again, I don't really like the default Stream Deck background, so I'm gonna set it from file. 
go back to my cloud drive into our stream deck folder here and I'm going to select our background key. So now I've got the black background and in terms of the font, it's looking a little small. So I just want to make it a bit bigger. That's going to probably be too big for a lot of the fonts. So let's start at 14 and see where you can kind of go from there. But now I've actually added my shortcut key. Now the things that you're going to need to add to this so that you can actually work within your stream deck is you need to have the switch profile button down in the bottom right corner because if you want to switch between these profiles, you need to have that button. Now some people could go forward add two buttons so you can go forward or go back. I prefer to really only have a couple pages. So I know that by pressing this, I'm just gonna be toggling through. So this is the basic setup um, when you're trying to configure it yourself. Now, if you have multiple systems that you wanna add this device to, I strongly suggest saving your profiles. And in order to do that, we're gonna start by clicking the settings buttons here. And there's just this little arrow that allows us to export or back up all these ones, create a backup. In this instance, we want to we want to create a new one. So let's just take these existing ones, DaVinci Resolve, and delete that. OS X minus, let's delete that as well. And now we don't have anything set, so we're going to go to our option, import. And in this instance, again, I, I've gone to my iCloud and I have set up something in here for having these set aside and this one's called presets stream deck and then this is instant i want to bring um, let's start with our osx ones so we'll just open that one up and you can see it's added in here now let's get rid of this default profile okay and then we're going to also add our davinci resolve keys so we're going to open that up and bring it in and you can see that this application now is, is working with DaVinci Resolve. So if we go to our main screen here, we can actually put our device to sleep if we want to by hitting the sleep button. We can turn the brightness up and down and we can toggle between our, our various pages. First thing in DaVinci Resolve you want to do is actually go to your keyboard customization. Um, in this instance, if we just go to our default DaVinci Resolve profile, put in color, search in node, and under the node settings, the only thing you really need to modify to work with this profile is Option Shift L, which will change your uh, current selected node. And you'd save this and then save it as whatever you want to title it. In this instance, I've got it set here as Smart Color 20. So we're going to save and load this profile up. So now on the color page, when you click that selected node, we can actually go in and modify this as lower corner. Or if you had some other nodes you wanted to previous node go back and modify these as well you can go change the label here for um, face and then you also have the option to disable specific nodes you can disable them all or if you want to you can bypass the grade now if you had a few different options you wanted to do some comparisons with you can just select those stills in your gallery and we're just going to click split screen and because selected still images is select from the drop down we go full screen we'll actually see all these and be able to do a comparison um, i'm just going to full screen back out of that and take off split screen now you could also just work on a clip level where let's say you have um, we'll create a new version and this one let's just pull out some of the contrast and so if we go to our previous or next version it'd be a local way of actually showing your clients on a clip per clip basis what you kind of want to modify and change um, the other ones that are pretty handy is this thumb toggle mode, which basically toggles the thumbnails, so it won't view it the same way that it was edited together, but you'll see that it stacks clips in their source time code mode together. So this makes it a little bit handier for actually being able to do comparisons between multiple shots in your timeline. Um, we'll switch back to how it was in the actual edit. And then you also have the option here to uh, export your project if you want to, so you can save it to somewhere on your iCloud or I've mapped out all of the actual individual pages of Resolve down on the bottom, so it's just quick, easy access there. And a nice one is on the edit page. I've also set it up so that toggle viewer will allow you to switch so your reference output device doesn't always get sent to the source picture is black, so that means I won't get a burn on my uh, exterior display. Now another key one is the markers that I've kind of set here, so you can go to your previous or next marker, but also add marker, so that if you do have an extension cord for your stream deck, you can sit away from your main source, let's say on a client couch, and actually watch it there and set markers as you're going through, so you can then revisit all those markers afterwards and see some areas that might have been problematic or that need a little bit more attention and detail.
Now we're going to use the switch profile to go back to our main page and we're going to open up Avid, which will contain the base light plugin for Avid. So now we can see most of these main settings, but before we can actually go in and have some of these controls, we need to make sure we modify our system to actually function properly with the function buttons. So first thing you want to do is go to Mission Control and make sure that F1 to 12 hasn't been mapped out to any of these Mission Control functions. And as well, underneath the keyboard settings, you want to make sure that the use F1, F2 keys, the standard functions and sets that you don't need to press function before doing any of these. This will limit your ability to turn volume up and down, etc. but you need these F12, F1 functions to actually communicate with base light and use the base light for Avid profile that I've supplied. Now, once you're actually back in Avid and the base light plugin, we're just gonna go under preferences and under the uh, plugins page, you here where you have your major grade type set, video grade and base grade, these are going to correlate to the top two buttons that are starting off our Stream Deck profile. So you just need to make sure whatever you have set here is specified. Now if getting started, if I want to delete a particular layer, I can just delete this or I can add a new base grade, which is going to be more core, adding the contrast, saturation and pivot of the offset of the whole image very kind of straightforward. If you wanted to actually get in video grade, we've also mapped that out so it'll be lift gamma gain, typical to what you'd see on the primary palette of Resolve. If you want to move up or down between these layers, we've mapped those out. We can bypass a single layer, we can bypass them all. Now, if you wanted to go through and just grab a snapshot of this particular frame here, and then if we go next to our next shot, and then when you hold the command button and drag, you can actually add that image there. And if you just click one more time while holding command, you'll be able to make that disappear. This is the way if you wanted to go through and do balancing. I myself don't like to do it this way. I prefer to do it with my uh, scratch pad. Um, but yeah, our previous and next button so we can actually move through clips. And again, if you didn't have this device, you'd just be doing this through all the F1 to 12 functions. Um, if we have added a uh, particular, let's say we want to add a shape on a base grade here, and we're just going to drag a circle um, we could toggle the way that this is being displayed with our matte display. Um, and then let's actually just delete this particular layer from our stack. Um, you also have the ability to add a D key. So let's say you wanted to grab a particular region of the image. Let's again go to our matte display. We're going to see where those, those areas have been selected. That was a pretty rough key. Just wanted to show you the base of it. Um, but we could toggle that matte display. Um, let's again delete this layer. We'll just add a new one. Um, another thing is if you actually wanted to copy the whole stack, we have our ability to do that, or we could paste over from this particular point. As well, you have the ability to change your numpad toggle. You can switch this from being where you actually modify the exposure up and down by using plus or enter, or you can actually change your RGB values with seven, eight, or nine. Um, in this instance, you can also change it to being your scratch pad. You could reference images that had been set in your scratch pad up in profile spot one or whatever numbers you set with your numpad. But I like to have the ability to toggle between these two particular modes quickly. And down at the bottom, I have option and shift because a lot of the functions that work within here use option shift correspondingly. And as well, if you're going through a shot, see that it's been combined with, with multiple versions of a shot or there's a break in between it. For example, here, there's a little bit of uh, a break that I didn't catch right there. Let's just step to that. So at this point here, all you have to do is go subdivide grade and boom, now you've kind of split this up so that you have an initial shot. And then when you close out here, you'll see in Avid, we actually have those new filter points that we add. That split that we just added will now show up here with our filler plugin. That's it. That's all you're gonna to need to know to get started with the Stream Deck XL for color grading and base light additions in DaVinci Resolve. This is a very valuable tool if effectively implemented in your workflow and you continue to remind yourself to use those functions over and over again to implement it in your process. For users that have a micro Blackmagic panel or a Tangent Wave, this is very handy because those devices are limited with the additional functions that they have. If you're using something like a Mini or an Advanced Panel or a full base light, obviously you don't need these because all those functions have already been mapped out. Now, I have provided profiles down in the description that you could download and use yourself, but I do strongly advise you to configure it based on your own needs and your own process as a colorist. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Smack Talk. I'm Scotty Mack, and if you haven't done so already, please hit the like button and subscribe. See you next time.